Hello friends and welcome. Um, today this video I felt led to talk about drawing near to the Lord and um, as I was in prayer time just the scripture came up draw near to me and I'll draw near to you and that's from James 4 8 so I wanted to talk about that today. Um, also shout out to Bloom's Coffee Bar because they have the best coffee in town and Adam brought me some coffee and I'm so happy because it made me wake up. But yeah, okay. So I want to start out and pray and then we'll get into the word and then what I felt like the Lord was putting on my heart to share with you guys. <sighs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for your ways. You are perfect in all your ways. Lord, I thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness and your faithfulness. And Lord, I just pray that I would be a mouthpiece for your spirit, that you would use me to convey what you are wanting your people to hear. Um, and Lord, just give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that receives and is receptive of what your spirit is wanting to say and what are you wanting to show us. And Lord, I just bless every listener, everyone who would log on and hear this message. I just bless them. And I pray the life-giving, well-spring love of Jesus flow through their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, so like I was saying, I wanted to talk about drawing near to God and Him drawing near to you. Um, <clears throat> kind of my background, I was raised in church from the time I was six. So I kind of had a head knowledge, but I feel... I knew Jesus, I knew God through whoever was telling me about them. I would read, you know, memory verses and things like that, but I did not have a personal relationship myself. I knew him through a friend, if you want to say. You, you know, you have acquaintance or someone you know through someone. That's how it was for many years. Um, and through that time, it was very easy to be tripped up into sin into the world um, because the world is enticing it is full of pleasures your flesh is drawn to the world um, so it's only natural that you naturally want to seek the things of the world um, and so yeah that happened to me and I know it's happened to many believers um, and for for some people I think they get so steeped in different things that are not of God that they feel like if they were even to reach out to God that he, they would get in trouble, that they would get reprimanded, that he would be, he would deal harshly with them. They just carry a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of condemnation about their choices, about what have, what they have done or what's happened to them. And so they don't <clears throat> draw near to God. Many times they're driven away from God. But I want to bring encouragement from the word and tell you exactly what the Lord says himself. Sorry, that's my dog in the back. But which is James 4, 8. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It doesn't say he will strike you with lightning or smite you or, you know, deal with you harshly or he will list your sins against you before he welcomes you. No, it says, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And how fulfilling and how much appreciation you have for that concept of not being, you know, whipped for doing something wrong. Instead, you are welcomed with a warm embrace from the Father. I promise you that's how it is. It's what the word says. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And I want to read um, verse 7 through verse 10 because it all kind of goes together. <clears throat> so it says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. Um, in the context of this verse, it before that, it talks about worldliness and how 
the world is an enemy of God. So those who love the world are enemies with God. Um, you cannot walk with the world and walk with God. It's You're double-minded and that doesn't work. It just can't work like that. So what the Lord is saying is submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. You can't resist the devil and still be walking with the world and walking in your sin. You have to turn away from those things. You have to submit to God, meaning come to him, draw near to him. And come recognizing that you have sinned. Come recognizing that you were wrong. And come with a heart of brokenness before the Lord. And he will draw near to you. The enemy will flee and God fills that space. And then it says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Your, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. <clears throat> Many people don't want to talk about sin because it's just kind of an icky thing to talk about and it brings up shame and guilt and you kind of start to relive different things. But one time the Lord showed me sin um, from his perspective. I asked the Lord just to kind of show me, you know, um, I was just seeking him, asking for his presence and show me um, what how he views sin. And um, it was very, very, very heavy. The glory of the Lord came into the room. And when I say that, I mean like I felt a thick presence come over me and just, I began to weep. He started to show me and through the Bible from Genesis on <clears throat> how sin entered into man. And then how time after time, people began to just choose sin, choose sin, choose sin. And God showed me what sin does is it takes you out of the presence of God. So for anybody who has children, this is what struck me. If your child was taken out of your presence and you could not get them to come back to you no matter how hard you pleaded with them, you begged, you expressed your love to them, your mercy to them, if they continued to walk away from you out of your presence and you didn't have access to them, how crushing and how heartbreaking that feels. Um, that is what I felt whenever I experience the Lord's perspective on sin. It grieves the Lord. It, it says in the scripture that the Lord's heart was grieved because they chose wickedness and they chose sin. So sin is, the enemy would try to get your focus on how it condemns and how it's shameful and guilt, guilt jerk you into not addressing your sin. But the Lord wants you to know that sin literally grieves him because it takes you out of his presence. He can't be with you the way that he would like to because you are choosing sin. And it takes you from his presence. <laughs> but the minute that you recognize that and that you turn away from your sin. And then because the Lord, <clears throat> when it speaks there, let your laughter turn to mourning, your joy turn to gloom. It's how you see your sin. When you recognize your sin, that's what it should cause within you to make you feel that it's not, it's, sin is not funny. Sin is not a game. Sin is not something to entertain or play with. It is literally something that grieves the Father's heart. And so that automatically should make you feel no joy, no laughter, Instead, it really should bring sorrow to your heart. And whenever that sorrow comes to your heart, you've had a mind change about sin and you want to walk the other way. And when you walk the other way, you draw near to the Lord and the Lord then draws near to you. So he's not going to bash you or shame you or condemn you or anything like that. He cannot resist the cries of his children. So that's why I want to encourage you to turn to draw near to the Lord and allow him to draw near to you. And the scripture says that times of refreshing come with repentance. Um, so yeah, that was <clears throat> the gist of what I wanted to share today. 
I hope it blessed you. I'm trying to keep these videos. Sorry, my battery's dying. I'm trying to keep these videos a little short um, just to try to get it condensed into what I'm trying to explain and work on articulating what I'm hearing in my spirit. So yeah, if you liked what you heard, comment below, um, share it with others. And um, I just pray that you have a blessed day, that you turn to the Lord and that you draw near and you experience that refreshing rain that comes. All right, see ya.